Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing the issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith, and today we'll be addressing the question, is heavenly life uniform? Now, in order to understand what this question even means, it helps to know what uniformity is and what makes it different from unity. When we talk of people being in unity with one another, we mean the second definition at Merriam-Webster, a condition of harmony, or a continuity without deviation or change, as in purpose or action. In short, it has to do with people being able to work together towards a common goal and or using common methods or establishing some sort of orderly way of coexisting. Uniformity is not like that at all. Uniformity refers to always being the same, having the same form, type, degree, not varying or consistent in conduct or opinions. It can refer to being unvaried or lacking in diversity. So our question for today is, is heaven like that? Well, we know that the saints of heaven aren't going to disagree about purpose or method. The purpose is happiness, and the method is the grace of God. That's obvious, at least for those in heaven. So, the saints in heaven have unity. Do we have any reason to think that they vary from one another? Well, let's look at two examples of saints to see if they vary. St. Therese of Lisieux was a Carmelite nun whose simple and practical approach to the spiritual life have made her one of the most popular saints in history. She is sometimes referred to as the Little Flower because of her attitude of humble faith and devotion. Her first six years as a nun convinced her of her smallness and insignificance, and through this humbling experience, she developed the little way of seeking heaven, childlike love of God with humility, surrender, confidence, and peace. St. Jerome was a classically educated man who used to quote from Virgil and other ancient authors to describe the terrors of hell. He was a historian and a man who was regularly agitated, impatient, and proud. He prayed regularly to be delivered from the vice of anger, and he regularly meditated on death and mortality, which is why he's often depicted as having a skull on his desk, like in this picture here. Aside from their holiness and their devotion to God's will, these two people would have almost nothing to discuss with one another. They have very little in common apart from being saints, which is evidence that God accepts saints of many different types from many different walks of life, and therefore that heaven is probably not uniform. However, it could be argued that much of the flavor and color of life comes from not being uniform. The very nature of flavor and color themselves come from different things. Flavors, for example, can be sweet, sour, bitter, hot, cool, minty, oily, savory, and so on. And these distinctions wouldn't exist in any state that was completely uniform. Likewise, there wouldn't be greens, blues, red, purples, magentas, and so on if colors were uniform. You just have one color and that's all. It's hard to deny that uniformity would require many good things to be completely lost, even if it wasn't applied to human nature itself. Therefore, it would be imperfect to insist on it. Therefore, it would be unworthy of God. However, while both of these are good reasons to think that heaven isn't uniform, I think there's an even better reason. Namely, God never seeks uniformity at any point in the Bible. He never tries to make everyone the same, ever. Instead, he selects individual people to perform specific and different functions. He chose Noah to build the ark, Abraham to make a new nation, Moses to speak to Pharaoh on behalf of the people of Israel and lead them out of Egypt, and all the judges and prophets were also chosen for different and unique roles. Jonah's preaching to the people of Nineveh was very different from the life of Elijah or Jeremiah, and not just because of anything that Jonah did. God assigned him a different task than he assigned to them. And when people objected, insisting that everyone should have the same role and authority, like, for example, Korah and his men when they rebelled against Moses, God immediately took action against them. This shows us that it is God's plan for people to not be uniform, for them to be diverse and varied in many ways, just not in ways that involve disobedience to his will. So for at least those three reasons, we have no reason to think that heaven is uniform, and some good reasons to think it isn't. Well, I've really enjoyed this series of episodes, and it's nice to finally get the chance to put some of these issues to bed once and for all. The truth is, as we've been discussing, God is not going to pull a surprise twist on you at the last second. There's no catch. He's not Darth Vader, and he won't alter the deal. He's not the Borg, trying to assimilate you and suppress your individuality. He's not Cthulhu, consuming and destroying things that get in his way. 
He's God, and he wants you to be happy with him in heaven. There is a real jackpot to Christianity, and it's called eternal life. Next season, however, we'll be tackling a topic I haven't dealt with much on this show yet, the highest of all created beings. See you then. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.